Hi, everyone. If you would share in the chat with us where you are from, we would love to hear where everyone is calling in from. LA, Alabama, Philadelphia, California, North Carolina, Atlanta, Florida, Michigan, New Jersey, Northeast Florida. Nice. We've got great representation then across the country. Wonderful. All right, Angie, I'll pass it off to you to get us started. So hello, everybody. Um, I'm Angie Rizzi, and I'm an outreach coordinator at NASA Langley Research Center. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself later when I kind of tell you my story. But the first thing I want to say is congratulations. Congratulations on um, your award, because we know that you... Um, worked hard on your projects. And uh, we may have a couple of teachers here tonight too. So if you're a teacher, although you did not specifically win the award, you um, sponsored someone who did. And so we wanna thank you for all the hard work that you do with your students. Um, so <clears throat> with that being said, I wanna just let you know if you can go to the next slide, please. Yay, you won. Hopefully you have a, some kind of certificate that looks something like this without the balloons. But we just wanted to do a little something more for you than for you to get a certificate. And so what we thought uh, might be good was for you to hear from some people who work at NASA. Um, we may have some just sort of general advice for you, um, information for you, how science has impacted our lives and we've pursued these things and um, maybe some specific tips if you think you might be interested in NASA someday. And so with that, I'll go, we'll go to the next slide and see that what we're planning to talk about tonight is you're going to meet a scientist, then you'll meet an intern um, or a former intern. And then we'll talk about NASA internships and career resources, and then um, hopefully have an opportunity for some questions. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Jessica Taylor, who is our scientist for the evening. Well, hello again, everyone. Congratulations on this award. Congratulations on completing your projects. And for um, we really appreciate your interest in Earth science and particularly NASA has a huge role to play in that. And I will tell you a little bit more about that. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a physical scientist. My background is atmospheric science. Um, I actually have a few degrees. One's in atmospheric science, one's in finance and one is in science education, and that's just because I really like to learn different things. And I have found myself now working for NASA Langley Research Center, and that is located in Hampton, Virginia. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about myself. I have two daughters and I have two little kitty cats. I don't know if they'll make an appearance this evening or not. Um, when I am not at work and spending time with my family, I do love to dance. I was um, always a dancer and I used to be a Latin dance instructor. So still love to do that and definitely love going to the beach. Um, I grew up in Florida. I saw that a number of you are um, currently in Florida. And when I learned about where the location of Hampton, Virginia was and its proximity to the beach, I was very excited about that. Um, I grew up spending my summers in Mexico. So my uh, mom is Mexicana. She is from Mexico and I have a, all of that side of the family lives there. And so I spent all of my summers in Mexico City. And in school, yes, that is a picture of me in middle school. I was a cheerleader and um, was always a dancer, as I mentioned. Um, 
But something kind of interesting that you might not think of a NASA scientist is that I always really struggled to feel confident in science and math. I liked those subject areas and I enjoyed learning about science. Um, I even liked doing math, but I didn't necessarily feel super confident in doing it or wanting to necessarily share what I had learned. Um, but a teacher in high school encouraged me to learn a little bit more about science. And I love lightning growing up outside of Tampa, the lightning capital of the world. And so I got a little more interested and got up enough courage to go to college for meteorology. Um, but in college is when I learned about a citizen science program. And citizen science just means um, non-professional scientists participating in science. Um, so in terms of citizenry, you can think of it as community or volunteer science. And I got involved with this program called GLOBE. And through that program, I collected measurements every day about the atmosphere. So I tracked our weather and took uh, temperature, pressure, relative humidity, aerosol uh, measurements. And I really learned science that way. I became an expert really in data collection and instrumentation. And I analyzed that data and learned how to ask better questions through the community. And I got to share my science and that is really how I became even more confident in science enough that I was really interested and willing to try pursuing a career as a scientist. And that's really how I became a NASA scientist. Um, so I did wanna share a little bit with you about NASA Earth Science. This beautiful animation is of all of the satellites we have orbiting our home planet Earth, that are looking back at Earth, um, collecting data about it. So I saw many of you are from Florida. As I said, I was from there. Um, but I didn't really have a great appreciation for what NASA does related to Earth science. I knew about the space shuttle program, but had no idea how important NASA is as an agency in um, monitoring our home planet. But we do, NASA does have a huge role to play. We are tasked with monitoring the Earth system, um, monitoring its health and any changes to it. And that includes everything from the ice and the cryosphere uh, to the water and hydrosphere and land and geosphere and the atmosphere, of course. And so all of these satellites have instruments on them. Most of them have multiple instruments on them, and each one does something a little different or measures something, the same thing in a different way. So kind of think of it like your five senses. There are some that are better at the sense of um, touch or maybe sight than others. And so by combining all these instruments together, we can get a better understanding of what's going on on our home planet Earth, which obviously is very important for us to continue to monitor. So let me move on to the next one here. Um, and I wanted to share with you, if you are interested in incorporating NASA Earth data into further projects and research, which I hope you are, uh, we wanted to share this one guide with you. Um, Angie, I don't know if you're in the um, Google Doc I did, or Google Slides, I did put the link in there if you could pop it in the chat. And we will send these out also when we're done with the webinar. So this is a wonderful table that was created by our partners um, and at IGES, and they created these, what we think of NASA data pathways. So you can use this chart to help identify what topic you might be interested in, and then identify where at NASA, what URL, what location might you be able to find this data. So this is a great resource to help you be able to identify where to go to get NASA data. And I would encourage you to think about how could you use NASA data in your future projects? What questions might you be able to ask by incorporating our NASA satellite data? 
Okay, and then the last thing that I wanna share with you right now is because citizen science, um, volunteer science was so important to me, I wanted to share with you that NASA has many opportunities to do these programs. Uh, the program that I mentioned, GLOBE, I get to still be a part of now as a NASA scientist. And so we have an app for that called Globe Observer um, that you can do with your family, as well as many other different NASA programs um, to be able to look at different things. So Globe is focused on Earth system science. Um, but for those of you who are interested in other topics as well, you can see in the image here on the left, there are all sorts of different topics that might be of interest to you in um, doing some NASA science directly yourself. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there. Congratulations again on winning this award. And I am going to go ahead and introduce Desiree. Hi, everyone. Um, congratulations on your award and all of the hard work that went into your, your projects. It's such a, a big deal. And I'm very excited to um, speak with you all today and celebrate with you. Um, my name is Desiree Wilson, and I am a former NASA intern. Um, and I am excited to share um, a little bit about my story and my experience interning with NASA in the hopes that um, you all um, could maybe go on to, to find um, an internship in um, some area that uh, you're really passionate about. Um, and so um, my current role is a scientific programmer at uh, uh, here at NASA Langley. And what that title means is that um, I work with computers for things related to science. Um, a scientific programmer could actually do a lot of different things, but my specific job uh, mostly consists of making scientific data available so that um, students like you can view it and study it. Um, and on this slide, I've listed just a few fun facts about myself. Uh, the first is that I grew up in a very small town located in the state of South Dakota. Um, and this town was so small that it actually only had one stoplight. Um, and then the second fact I wanted to share with you is that I have a really sweet dog named Lucky, um, who have, I've had since I was a teenager. She is uh, 14 years old now, uh, but we still have a lot of fun together. Um, and to give you just a little bit of background about myself as a student, um, I was always pretty curious um, and I liked learning, but only about um, some very specific topics that I was interested in, mainly geology and biology. Um, and that was kind of a problem um, in school where you need to learn a lot of different subjects, especially when you get to college, you have to take a lot of um, core classes um, to obtain your degree. And so that was one of the biggest barriers I had while I was working on my education um, to get a science degree was that I still had to take a lot of the courses that um, were a bit more challenging for me. And I bring this up because um, you may encounter some challenging courses along the way to reaching your educational goals. Um, and you should not give up because many of us have been there. Um, and have had to overcome challenges like that to reach our long-term goals. And then a little bit about how I ended up in NASA was definitely through the um, NASA internship program. Um, so while I was in school, uh, I applied for a NASA internship. Um, in an internship, it's, it's like a short-term job that you would normally do in the summer while you're in college uh, to gain some work experience in whatever it is that you're studying. And so I ended up being selected for an internship working with the MyNASA data team, um, which eventually then uh, turned into my job after I graduated college. Um, and I really enjoyed my time as a NASA intern um, because I was really able uh, to learn um, about my field of study. Um, I got to work on meaningful projects. And then also these projects are important to NASA's uh, missions. So it's very meaningful work. Um, so it was a very worthwhile experience. And I really encourage you to apply um, to internships throughout your college education. 
Um, and then uh, we'll go on to the next slide, please. Um, and so now I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the project project that I worked on um, as a NASA intern and continue to work on as a scientific programmer and the goals of that project. Um, I work for a program called My NASA Data. And this program specifically works to help students like you learn about Earth science uh, with authentic NASA satellite data. Um, so Jessica was telling us a little bit about how um, NASA has this entire Earth Science Division, and we actually have satellites going around and um, doing all of this monitoring of the Earth. And so with the My NASA Data Project, um, what we do is we develop lessons and other resources for your teachers um, to help students like yourselves um, learn about the different characteristics of the Earth and how they're related to each other. Uh, using this um, authentic NASA data. And so um, my role on this team is I make many of the maps of the NASA satellite data um, so that you can see the data visually and how it changes at different locations on Earth and um, over time. And these maps that I make, they're used in the lesson plans that we develop. Um, and so an example would be that image there on the slide. Um, that's some NASA data that shows temperature uh, all across the Earth. Um, and the red parts of that map show where the temperature is very high near the equator. And then the blue parts of the map show where the temperature is much lower. That would be like the North Pole and South Pole. Um, and I make these maps um, using a software that's on my computer that allows me to plot the, the data um, that's collected by satellites and then apply color to the range of values so that we can, we can see it all laid out in front of us on this map. And so um, this process, it has a name, it's called Geographic Information Science or GIS for short. All right, next slide, please. And so how is all of this NASA data used? Um, like, what is, what is the significance of all of this? Um, yes, I talked about um, we develop lessons uh, to help teach some concepts in earth science, but this is so important because um, this data is used to understand how the different parts of the earth system are interacting with each other and how they change one another. It's actually very important for science. Um, for instance, we could study how the amount of rain in an area um, could impact the plants that grow there, or we could see how temperatures impact ice sheets, um, all sorts of things. And we can also study characteristics, um, how these characteristics change over time, and use that information to make predictions about uh, what will happen. And in this way, we can really continue to learn new things in science and can then teach others. Next slide, please. And so um, last of all, this is just a slide with some things that I found really helped me um, to get into the career I have now. Um, and the first was that I felt I really needed a strong foundation in math and science. And as I talked about earlier, this wasn't always the easiest and I didn't always enjoy all of my classes, uh, but I did not give up because I was very focused on reaching my long-term goals. And so I want all of you to be really focused in on what your long-term goals are and how to achieve them. Um, second, um, I challenged myself um, again, part of this, is um, not giving up when you encounter um, it's two I would say is taking risks um, you'll never know if you're capable of something or if you like something until you try it um, so please keep trying and and try new things um, challenge yourself because it could always open up new opportunities for you um, also when preparing for my career um, I wanted to choose something I was already interested in because I felt that um, if you already enjoy learning about a subject, 
um, it's very easy to continue learning about it and gradually become an expert over time. Um, and lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Um, when you don't understand something, it is okay to ask your teachers, your parents, and even your other uh, classmates and friends for help. And I think you'll find that most um, people really do want you to succeed. And that's all I had for my story. So I will pass it, pass it back to um, whoever's next on the agenda. But thank you and congratulations on your award. So next, yes, thank you. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that at NASA, there are lots of different people from lots of different places. And so um, there are a couple of links here on this slide and we will share those links out um, where you can see a map of people from all over the world and where they're from that work at NASA. And then there's this website, um, this NASA people that just talks about lots of different people at NASA and different kinds of jobs. So it's great. We have many, many scientists and engineers and technical people and math people, and that's really wonderful. But we also have other kinds of jobs. And so it's really neat to read some of these stories and hear about some of the different kinds of opportunities that are available. And then the next slide, please. Um, we've got a bunch of links here on this one that are going to um, talk to you about different internship opportunities. And as I said, um, or as Desiree said earlier, an internship is kind of like a short term job. So it's an opportunity for you to get some experience and to um, find out things that you like and also find out things that maybe you don't like and to practice things. And one of the things I'm gonna say about NASA um, internships is that they are very good at giving you some good real work to do. Um, when I was in college, I had a different type of internship somewhere and um, Later on as an adult, I had a NASA internship and I feel like the NASA intern program does a really good job of trying to give people nice opportunities. So you can find out about those at intern.nasa.gov. Um, it is, you have to be at least 16 years old to get a NASA internship. The majority of the opportunities are actually for college students. So there are a few for high school students, but not as many. So what I encourage you to do is look and see, get familiar with the application process and don't give up if you don't get one the first time, especially if you're still in high school and um, keep trying. But there is a program for some high school internships, I believe um, not necessarily if you're a senior, but it's the C's Summer High School Internship Program. Um, it is too late to apply for that for this year, but it's something that you might wanna keep in mind for the future. Um, and that's an important point too, is that typically internship applications and things like that for many different programs are well in advance. So when you, if you're thinking about that you wanna have maybe a summer internship, you probably need to start thinking about that in about January. You can't think about it like two weeks before school gets out. Um, and then there's also a program called DEVELOP, which is with the NASA Applied Sciences um, program. And that's a really neat program where they take lots of different people with sort of different areas of expertise and um, they come together and try to use NASA data to um, look at some kind of real world problem and give them some answers to that. And so I did put all these links in the chat, but we will also send a follow-up email to everybody who attended tonight 
Um, and before I move on, I just want to see if Jessica had anything she wanted to add to this um, information. Thanks, Angie. Um, the only thing I would say is echo some of the tips that you shared that uh, start early in the application process. So normally six months out will help you um, in that sort of an application. And you should try for one, right? Like there, it's going to be given to somebody, so it might as well be you. And you certainly won't get the position if you don't apply. So I encourage you to have it on your radar to apply. And I realize that we are sharing with you some of the NASA programs. Um, some of these do have some virtual opportunities, but maybe even start thinking about something closer to you if there are internship off opportunities closer to you or someplace that you can volunteer at. Um, I really appreciated what Desiree said about, you know, just keep trying. And I know that I had an opportunity in high school to volunteer someplace, that that helped give me a lot of ideas about, like Angie said, what I liked in a job, what I was good at, and also gave me some understanding of what I didn't like in a job. And it also helped me learn about things that I needed to grow at and some things that were maybe my weaknesses that I could improve on. Um, so that's another great way to kind of set yourself up for success in any career you look at to is think about ways that you can continue to learn more. Um, and I also just want to mention one more thing that Desiree said is really liked how she said um, her suggestion about asking for help. I know that sometimes that can feel awkward, but I would say in particular with NASA internships, um, oftentimes the people who get selected are people who show a little bit more ambition, are willing maybe to reach out with an email. Um, in an interview, they might ask a question about the program, show that they've done some background research and ask a question. So you can apply Desiree's suggestion to a lot of different things. Thank you. So next slide. So my story, my personal story does encompass a lot of these same pieces of advice and it just looks a little bit different. So I just wanted to share it. My fun facts are that I went to 11 schools before I graduated from high school. Everybody always asks me if my father was in the military and he was not, but we did move around a lot. And you can see from this map of the United States, all the different states that I lived in um, while I was growing up. I really do like to play board games a lot and cook and read, but I also like to travel and get out and try um, adventurous things. And I do really like to learn. And so a lot of times I try to incorporate that with my travel. So I'll try to learn about places I'm going to um, or, or uh, the kinds of food that they eat there so I can maybe try to cook it or something like that. So um, next slide, please. When I, the summer before my senior year in high school, Sally Ride was the first woman to go into space. And that really, really inspired me. And so I had this idea that NASA was awesome and I kind of wanted to work at NASA. Um, not sure that I wanted to go in space. Wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do for NASA, but I was super inspired and I wanted to work there. Um, and I went to Purdue to go to college, and I was a very, very successful high school student. When I got to Purdue, my very first semester, I took chemistry, and I got a B in my chemistry class. And I'm embarrassed to say, but it is the truth, that um, when I got a B in my class, next slide, please, this is how I felt about myself. Um, I was really disappointed and I thought that I was not smart enough to pursue science because I was major, I was in the school of science. Um, and so that is what's called negative self-talk. Um, I gave myself in my own mind a negative message. 
Um, and the, what was bad about that especially was that I did not share with anybody that I felt that way. Um, so next slide, please. If I had shared with somebody how I felt, I didn't share it with my parents. I didn't share it with my academic advisor. I really feel like people would have said to me, you can do this, right? Like a B is not the end of the world. And you, you know, you don't have to have straight A's to major in a degree and be successful, right? Um, but I didn't share it and I didn't ask for help like Desiree said. Um, and so I changed my major um, to a different technical field. Next slide, please. And I ended up um, going into information technology for a long time and uh, did that. And then I went into teaching, which I also always wanted to teach. So I wanted to work at NASA and I wanted to teach, didn't know how I was gonna make that work. Um, but um, after programming for a long time, I went into teaching and I got an internship at NASA. And uh, there are some internships for teachers at NASA to help them learn things that they can go back and take to their classroom. And while I was an intern, I got in, um, introduced to some of the citizen science that Jessica was talking about with GLOBE. I started doing citizen science with my students, um, which was great. They loved it and I also really loved it. And um, because I had such a good experience with it and um, enjoyed it so much, ultimately there ended up being an opportunity at NASA and then I ended up working at NASA in education, which is like my dream of um, my whole life and what I wanted, you know, didn't even know exactly that I wanted when I went to college, but it was like all the different things I wanted when I went. And so the point that I'm trying to get across to you is that um, it's it, what Desiree said about asking for help and sticking to it is really important. Um, and then the part I'm gonna add to that is that if you follow your passion and your interests, even though I did change my path and I, and I um, you know, took a few twists and turns along the way, I still was true to following my passions and my interests and um, kind of ended up full circle uh, back with something really, really rewarding. And so it's important to think about what you like and, um, and to continue to pursue those things. And don't think that you have to be perfect along the way. So next slide, please. Okay, so if you are interested in NASA as I was inspired um, before my senior year, you can follow the NASA news in, um, at www.nasa.gov. You'll see releases and things right there. You can engage in the citizen science that we talked about. There, um, I believe I already put a link in the chat for NASA citizen science. So there is the GLOBE program, but there are other opportunities as well. And learn about NASA careers and apply for those NASA internships. Just like Jessica said, someone's going to get it. So um, you might as well try for it. And with that, um, next slide, we just want to congratulate you again on your hard work and your interest in earth science. And um, we can take questions in the chat or the Q&A function. So I see what kind of characteristics make one stand out when applying for these internships. Well, I'll share a little bit about what um, has caught my eye as a scientist who's put them out before is definitely if somebody takes the time 
to look up the program that they're applying for. I know that sounds silly and maybe obvious, but not everyone does that. Um, not everybody will take the time to, so say for example, if we have um, a, a GLOBE internship, go to the GLOBE website, Google that, look it up, find out something about it and include that in your application. Um, so that way we know that you have taken that initiative to go that extra step to make sure you've done that research. That to me always stands out. Desiree, you've been an intern before. Do you have any advice on how to? <laughs> yeah, um, so um, actually this was my, um, the last few months I've been a mentor for the first time ever. So I've actually worked with um, an intern as their, as their mentor guiding them along. And one of the things that really stood out um, to me with our last intern was um, just enthusiasm for the project. Um, so sometimes people will just apply just to um, get some experience on their resume. Um, and this is kind of tied to what Jessica was talking about. But if you show that you're really um, passionate about the work that's going to be done um, for whatever project you apply for, that's something that I think really, uh, really stands out to know that um, you're just excited to be there and to learn. So um, there's a great question in the Q&A of, do you have a favorite book? Oh, I'll answer what my favorite book is, and it's not a science book. <laughs> but uh, my favorite book is a book called The Giving Tree. If you've ever seen that, it's a short book. Um, but it's just about um, caring for another person. And I, I, I really like that book. Okay, I'll share one of mine. Um, Journey Home is a book about animal migration. And I took a class called Teaching Biology I took it because I did not like biology and I still to this day do not love biology, um, but I wanted to take a class about it because it wasn't my favorite thing. And the way I made biology work for me was that I had this background as a meteorologist and animal migration is about how living things change with the seasons or with climate. And so believe it or not, that is how I was able to combine my current passion of meteorology with a topic that really wasn't my area of interest. And um, to this day, I still love reading about animal migration and monarch butterflies are just so cool. I had to think about this one for a bit, but I think, um, my favorite is a science fiction novel. Um, it's called Childhood's End, and it kind of focuses on humanity and how we find meaning in our progress through science and art. And it's got a little bit of funny humor in there with um, <laughs> just like alien races and <laughs> um, different things that happen along the way. So pretty fun. Thank you. There's an, another question in the chat that says, what are the day-to-day -day roles of a NASA scientist? And does an intern have a similar experience to that of a scientist? Yeah, great question. Um, and the answer is there are lots of um, different types of roles that scientists play. We have some scientists at NASA who um, spend a lot of time working in a laboratory. So um, for example, at NASA Langley, we work with a lot of laser technology. And so you might be in the laser lab, um, developing, helping to develop that instrument, testing that instrument. 
Um, and then we have people who work with that data a lot. And so they might be on their computer a lot um, doing that and helping to analyze the data. Um, and then we also have scientists who work very much as, um, I'm gonna call them like a manager, right? So whether they're managing a project or managing teams of people, and that's a lot of meetings. I would fall into that category of having a ton of meetings in my day to day. Um, but there's a few things that still unite all of the scientists. It's that they're still working in the topic of science, still trying to progress that NASA science and um, global understanding. And they all work with other people. They all work with teams and work with other people. Um, I'm, I don't know of a single scientist who works by themselves. And I think that's something that's often surprising about um, science is just how much teamwork is involved. And really science is such a global endeavor that you wind up to with colleagues and partners, not just across the United States, but from around the world. And it's not um, completely unique to get to talk to people from outside of your area on a regular basis, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, interns get to replicate that. And so oftentimes, depending, you can look at the internship profile to see if it talks a little bit about what a day-to-day -day might be like. Um, and in fact, I would recommend that you ask that question. If you get to be selected for an interview, I'd ask that question. Um, but something I know that we also do at NASA Langley is if you're an intern, and let's say you want to, we call it shadow. Let's say you want to go shadow somebody else to see what a day is like in their life. We allow you to do that, um, obviously, if it works for the person's timing. Um, but you could job shadow someone just even for a day where you could kind of see their meetings or go into their lab. We've got people that work on aircraft, um, lots of different things. Um, there's a question. So I'm going to combine two questions. Um, did you always know you wanted to work in the science field? And then what's your favorite thing about science? Maybe we could take those together. Yeah, Desiree, do you want to start? Sure. Um, so I don't think I always knew I wanted to work in science, but I definitely had an interest in science from a young age. Um, it was between science and art, um, but I think what really guided me towards science um, was just uh, learning. I was curious and I like the sense of discovery that uh, comes with science and um, just having those aha moments where um, you learn something new or you solve a problem is what really drove me into that direction and, and how much I enjoyed the challenge of it. Um, so I'll share the answer is like definitely no. <laughs> um, I did not think at all about uh, going into science. Growing up, I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to teach dance. Um, I wanted to be a sports therapist for a long time. Then uh, I think I mentioned that I got a degree in finance. Well, I used to be a day trader. And so Science was not necessarily the first thing that I came up with, um, but like Desiree mentioned, I really enjoyed learning and I really was excited about the opportunity to learn something new. And I think that in particular is something that science gives us. And then of course, working at NASA is that extra edge of, of really new cutting edge science. And so I didn't find my place in science until I, I was into college um, and, and wasn't sure that that was going to be my path until probably in graduate school. Um, so you can go to high school if you choose to go to college. And then there are some um, different disciplines uh, and there are several in science where you're asked to get these advanced degrees going into graduate school. So a master's or sometimes even a PhD. And so I was in grad school and that's when I finally figured out what I wanted to do, which was work in the sciences. Angie, I know you shared your 
travels around lots of different jobs as well. Yes, yes. And and what they had in common, because you could say I was doing, well, not exactly computer science, but the computer programming was still a STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and what I really liked about it is the problem solving aspects and always learning something new. But then I had that part where I also wanted to teach. And so I found this nice sweet spot where I can continue to learn, but I also get to, to help other people learn um, some of the same things. So um, yeah, it's been very, very interesting and it's very fun to work somewhere where you always can be learning something new um, and exciting. So I see also there's a question about are there medical roles at NASA and absolutely there are medical roles at NASA. Um, everything from we have clinics at our um, centers. So we have medical personnel that need to work there. And then of course we have, met, you know, you may have heard about things like studying what the effects of space are on the astronauts, you know, and, and how does it affect their bodies when they're up there. And then we also have things like, um, that are kind of a mixture between medical and and other things. Maybe some people call it human factors. Some people call it ergonomics. But looking at things like how do, does the this affect um, people's perception of hearing or seeing or um, different things like that. And um, if anybody wants to add anything to that, Jessica. No, I think that's good. Yes, and then I see another question. I, um, it's in the chat and the Q and A of what are some of the most important skills NASA will be looking for in five to six years, which I think is a great forward thinking question. Yeah, so I can. I think I can start with that. Um, you know, when you go to school, you learn a lot about content areas, and that's important. Um, but what's more important about that is your ability to then learn content. Because what continues to happen is that new technologies are developing, um, different ways that we use things and um, different um, calculations that we have to apply to things. And so really it becomes your ability to start learning that other thing. Um, and so it's actually not too often anymore that we find people who are sticking in the same exact subject area, doing the same exact thing. Because even if you were in the same subject area, the technology changes so rapidly that you still need to be able to adapt and learn that new thing. So I would say that skill set of being willing to apply and learn something new and take that chance, like Desiree said, asking those questions, and being able to use, you know, the information from your past to apply to this new thing. And again, that idea of teamwork, right? It's really important that in these um, opportunities that we have to work uh, something new, we really bring a lot of different ideas to the table and people with a lot of different backgrounds and being able to listen to people who have had different experiences and backgrounds to you to help learn from their experiences is also really important. I don't know, do you guys have anything that you would think of in particular in five to six years? Well, I think what you're talking about is absolutely the most important um, skills. And I like the fact that it was the question was about skills and not about what degrees are they looking for or something. Um, but I will say, if you are looking for an actual skill, maybe this is my own bias because I was in IT, but um, coding is a very helpful 
skill. Um, there are many, many different jobs. Uh, you know, the scientists do a coding, engineers do coding, a lot of different people. And so that is, it can't hurt. I'll just put it that way. It can't hurt. Um, if you're looking for something practical that you want to, a step you can take. How about you, Desiree? That's true. Um, I'm just going to echo what you both said. Um, I was going to say the same thing, Angie. Uh, Python, it's open source and it's so handy. Um, and I actually, I didn't study technology as much in school. My background's actually in geology. But while I was there for a minor, um, I took tech related classes. I took a computer science class and a coding class. And they've helped me so much, even just understanding what other experts here at NASA are, are, are talking about. Um, it, it was so helpful just to know a little bit about computers since they, um, they drive so much of what we're doing. But then also what Jessica said, that was, that's huge. In fact, I had another mentor um, tell me that same kind of advice in college, um, that college is kind of where you learn how to learn and, and to become adaptable, like she was talking about, it's, it's a very, very important skill set. And the teamwork. Yeah, teamwork is huge. Okay, there's a question that asks, do you believe in aliens? And <laughs> my answer is going to be, um, I don't know enough about it to say that I believe or don't believe, but I do know that NASA does look for signs of life. Uh, they're looking on uh, the moon and Mars to see if there is any evidence, but I wouldn't say that that's necessarily aliens like you would think about in a movie, but maybe more like microscopic life. I don't know if anybody else wants to take a stab at that one. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll share that I am fascinated by some of what NASA is doing to research life and forms of life in other planets. I think it is super interesting. Um, I also want to share, uh, I have typically tried to stay away from terms like belief system. Um, because in science, while there, we, we try to think of things as sometimes black and white, there's also a lot of gray. Um, but uh, your own intuition is very important, but it's also really important for us to follow data, right? And to uh, be able to track and reproduce data sets. Um, but that still doesn't mean that we're not human and have intuition and inklings that lead us, guide us to ask certain questions. And I think the question about aliens is one of those examples where um, uh, as humans, that is just something that we are built and designed to be seeking out and learning about. And this is a great uh, overlap area of that interest that humans have and then how that leads to different science discoveries. So I'm excited for the continued NASA missions that we have going on on all different planetary bodies uh, to learn more about not just that formation of that body, but also for that search and discovery, right? So um, the last question that I'm seeing here is what are your favorite things to research about? Well, I'm an atmospheric scientist and my, uh, even though I first became interested because of questions that I had about thunderstorms and lightning, I don't get an opportunity now to research lightning, but I do get to still work in clouds. And so I love seeing pictures of clouds and learning more about how clouds form. And I think it's so funny that a topic that sometimes 
we like to talk about as what um, we would talk to preschool students about big puffy clouds is also still a very relevant topic for professional scientists is learning about clouds, their formation, are they changing as the climate changes? Um, yeah, and then if it's not in my day to day job, I mentioned about migration. I do really like learning about plant phenology and how plants change with seasons. And I'm not a researcher, so I, or I'm not a scientist, so I'm not doing official um, NASA research. But what I really like to learn about is the way that different parts of the Earth system are connected. So like Jessica talked about those clouds and it's really interesting to me how that might be connected to air pollution and how that might be connected to potential um, climate and how that's connected to the temperatures on the surface of the earth and, um, and all kinds of other examples of that. So to me, learning about the interconnections is really interesting and learning about how some change in the earth system might affect something else. And those are really complicated ideas and we don't have all the answers yet. So we are still, you know, we're still researching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, that's the exciting part, right? Is that these are still active areas for learning. Oh, and I wanted to share with all of my uh, Florida colleagues that I'm, I'm sporting my Tampa Bay Lightning jersey right now because the, the game's starting. So hockey time. <laughs> Desiree, is there something that you still like to learn about? You're on mute. Actually, it oh, doesn't. Yeah. OK. Um... Okay, I cut out for briefly, so I, I missed the first part of this question. Um, but um, if you can hear me now, one of the things um, I really like learning about um, is the atmosphere. So I studied geology in school, um, but we never really talked much about the atmosphere and how it's connected and climate. And now being here at NASA Langley, I get to hear from a lot of atmospheric scientists um, in our Earth Science Division here. We have a lot of them doing atmospheric uh, research and studying the radiation budget. And so I really like learning about that. Um, and then because I'm familiar with a lot of um, Earth history and studying geology, I like to take what I'm learning about the atmosphere and apply it to like um, historical um, looking back and looking at like climatology and how the atmosphere has changed over time and how it's connected. So similar along the lines of earth system science. Um, I, I really enjoy studying that. I Thank hope you. that through all of these questions and our stories, what you're able to walk away with is to continue to pursue different opportunities in science and keep asking different questions about science because that's what we're still doing now. And so if that's something that you enjoy doing is learning about all of these different aspects of science, then that very well might possibly be a good career choice for you. Um, but just through your participation in the fair, that shows initiative, being able to win this award, that's huge congratulations. And then just even for participating tonight, um, that's, we really appreciate everyone spending their time with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye.